good evening everybody good evening ma'am Shall we start? Then, how many are there? Right. Uh, now, uh, last week uh, we could not. Uh, to the class uh, due to an unavoidable circumstance. Anyway, uh, if your friends have uh, not joined, please uh, send them a message to join. Right. Uh, now, so far, uh, we were discussing about the uh, teacher and the classroom and here uh, in this part we will discuss the peer group and student uh, subculture uh, now in a classroom the role of a teacher uh, is uh, not simple. Sometimes she's a trainer and another time a motivator and a facilitator and sometimes a counsellor as well. So she uh, adheres to different roles and in the meantime, his or her duty is to provide uh, all the information uh, of the given in the syllabus. So, uh, uh, along with that, it is necessary that the students get ready to learn by themselves. So uh, we'll uh, find out what is a peer group. Actually, uh, it is a group of children who belong to the same age group. Now in a classroom, there are children basically of the same age. So uh, they can form peer groups in a classroom. So, uh, and socialization among peers can take place in a peer group because in a classroom, uh, they spent uh, about six hours uh, together. So uh, they are, the peers are, or the students are very close to the, their peers rather than their families. Now, it has been understood strong, uh, stronger influence of the peer group than their adults. And they uh, form uh, attitudes within their peer group. And uh, students are uh, very much influenced by their influence can be seen in uh, study activities also. The functions of 
peer groups. What are the functions of peer groups? Now, uh, in the classroom, when there are peer groups, they uh, interact with each uh, other. And they build up confidence to interact with friends. Now, uh, in a uh, in a in their families have a heterogeneous uh, group that we uh, differ. In families, they have uh, different, uh, different experiences. So, from family, when they come to school, uh, they get uh, uh, a very much uh, homogeneous group in the, the classroom. So. Uh, they are they they get a uh, uh, confidence and they get an uh, identity among the uh, members of the uh, peer group and in a classroom uh, they the, the they are uh, because their families. Uh, are not there. Uh, they uh, they are without the influence of their families. Now, uh, in peer groups, uh, children also learn to deal with uh, opposite sex. In opposite gender. Uh, Girls and boys. Uh, in the classroom, you have so uh, they uh, social skills uh, which are needed to deal with the, uh, people with opposite sex. And uh, more mature in the So, uh, as I say, uh, in peer groups, they become uh, more mature with, uh, with their uh, uh, experiences in the groups. And they, uh, they get a position uh, in the groups. And uh, it's very... Uh, special position of their own. So they learn to accept uh, the position with 
is. Now, uh, as children grow uh, older, and uh, when they move uh, from junior uh, school to senior school, uh, they are uh, they they are contact with their peer groups be, uh, become thicker, and uh, they get uh, very uh, close relationships with each other. Uh, and uh, they have uh, the adolescents may have even stronger associ association with their uh, peer group uh, because uh, you know uh, in their uh, when they become adolescents uh, they find uh, very much peace uh, and uh, relaxed with their on friends and uh, in this uh, age you know they see a, a gap generation gap between uh, parents and them they think they do not understand them they have conflicts with parents so, but in their peer groups, they, they do not get such a thing. Uh, they share their feelings with each other. They, are, uh, they get a special place in the group and they respect each other. So it becomes, the peer group become a comfort zone for these individuals uh, and, and there another thing now they the friends will not laugh at your failures they help you to uh, overcome your problems or failures so if you support uh, to do something so you start valuing them so it becomes very 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 important place for you now there are uh, three factors actually which uh, affect the peer group activities they are age, sex or gender, and the social class. We'll uh, look at them in detail. Age. Now, uh, children form close groups at, as they start going to school. Uh, they are class friends. So, uh, the, these groups vary with age. Uh, we'll see now if that means from time to time uh, they are they get matured so the their uh, relationship with their peers also uh, become uh, different we'll see how that happens uh, in the kindergarten uh, that mean uh, almost uh, the, uh, before the primary age. So at this time, they are very young and they need to play mostly alone. They have their toys uh, which they like. They like to play with their toys rather than their friends. Now gradually, like uh, in the Montessori. So they, they gradually start uh, having friendships with uh, their peers. Then they become partners. And they, uh, at this uh, age, the friendships are not very permanent. 
uh, one day they may have one uh, uh, girl or boy as a friend tomorrow they have another likewise but sometimes they may start everlasting friendships at the kindergarten level next we come to primary stage now we'll see how they react with the peers at the primary classes uh, they uh, girls and boys uh, do not mix too much with each other they have uh, separate groups separate groups mostly and the boys groups are very structured normally the boys groups are uh, larger than the girls groups girls mostly uh, make friends with one or two two other girls but in boys they they have a, a large gang and a group leader so by the time they reach the end of the primary school they form their close group they have their own friends so uh, what causes them to be uh, very close friends normally if they live close by if they go to uh, go back home uh, at the same uh, school service or school van or school bus there there's enough time to talk with each other have more relationship so they are the proximity of living influences the closeness of the peer group now uh, that is because they go to school together and come back together and sometimes they they are family friends the families are also friends so they have uh much more time to uh get all along with each other now we come to the uh, secondary stage now after primary in the secondary stage stage uh students become more mature and in their teenage they develop strong groups than the primary stage uh, and uh, here uh, they uh, get along with peers uh, due to a common uh, factor uh, they have uh, like uh, Uh, common interest they clubs uh, like that uh, there is chance to uh, form peer groups and uh, so during uh, these groups uh, stage boys uh, form uh, peer groups with uh, boys in uh, outside outside that mean from other schools uh, like because they uh, the boys get more chances than the girls uh, to mix with the uh, others so boys are more likely to form uh, groups uh, with uh, boys outside the school their school Uh, so uh, due to their uh, interest or their commitment to uh, certain things like uh, uh, fashions uh, uh, like uh, these days uh, cinemas or uh, like uh, social events or any other thing 
due to the similarity of them, they form uh, strong groups. So groups gradually become more structured and permanent. Now, in gender wise or sex, we'll see how uh, uh, how they are how they form their groups. Now, uh, boys and girls they grow older, but boys have a typical pattern of groups. That means they they form groups according to certain uh, pattern. And uh, their groups are bigger than the girls' one, and they mostly discuss about sports or the movies or latest events uh, and uh, musical shows or various other common have similar smaller groups. They have uh, sometimes different uh, uh, interests than the boys. Uh, they may talk about their favorite dresses, actors, favorite uh, singers, uh, favorite social events, and like that. So mostly same age groups are predominant during this stage. But as children grow older, they reach colleges of higher education institute. They, uh, they uh, involve in more mixed groups. Sometimes uh, uh, after levels, they join higher education institutes and there they form other peer groups sometimes. We'll see how the social class influence these uh, peer groups. Uh, what is the social class? Actually, it is the social background of students. Social background, whether they in, uh, include the higher class, upper class, middle class, or the lower class. So each of these classes have their own uh, set of values and practices. They are, uh, uh, have separate uh, values and practices. So if the children include to the similar cl social class, they have similar things, similar interests and activities to talk about, to engage in. So this uh, similarity in customs make it easy for children of the same background uh, to gel with each other easily. Uh, the student community has a culture of its own. Now, the student groups, student community is a subculture, uh, subculture in the culture. It's a subculture. And they have their own friendships and acquaintances. And uh, according to a study by three American social psychologists, namely uh, Leon uh, Festinger, Leon Festinger, Stanley uh, Sketcher, and Kurt Beck, 1950, they say uh, the friendship friendship choices of individuals dependent on two major factors, two major factors, friendships, a peer group mean friendship. They, they make friendships uh, depending on two major factors. That is 
propinquity. Propinquity means proximity, closeness, and the opportunity of, of interaction. See the whether these are uh, correct to your friendships. If you have close uh, pre, uh, proximities or, or your friends are close by, you are more likely to have friendships. And if you have uh, opportunities, more opportunities to interact with each other, you are likely to have friendships. See whether these are correct with your relationship with your friends. And another social psychologist, uh, uh, George Homans, uh, also accepted this. Uh, he says, the more chances of two people meeting, the more chances of their friendship to develop. If uh, two people meet uh, 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 more and more or regularly, there is a chance to uh, develop their relationship. And if you dislike or uh, dislike a person, you may not uh, uh, try to have friendship with that person. See whether these tally with your friendships. Now, uh, it is also seen that similarity of certain aspects uh, is another reason for uh, relationship, uh, friendship. Uh, similarity of certain aspects. They see certain things in a similar manner, like like uh, uh, like, uh, like this, you will like or children will uh, like to have uh, children or others who like yeah. them. They they like uh, they try to be acquainted with persons who like them. If you have a friend uh, friend who like you. Uh, your your friendship become more uh, strong. Such relations uh, uh, become everlasting ones because there is a mutual respect for each other. They you respect you, each other. So keep this in mind. If you want to have a strong relationship, everlasting uh, friendship with anyone. Uh, you, you should have a mutual respect for each other and you have a liking for each other, right? These are very, very important things. And this relationship, you know, is very profitable, very beneficial for both of them. And they develop uh, uh, every day their relationship develop because you're helping your friend your friend helps you and if you have any difficulty your friend help you to come out of that difficulty like uh, so you are to develop from your friendship uh, so these are some of the facts which lead to a student subculture there's a subculture, uh, uh, a certain things are developing. Sometimes problems are also witnessed. Ah, the, the other side, the other side. In these subcultures, in these peer groups, there may be some problems. What are they? Students form their strong groups and start bullying junior students. Have you seen this? Right now, the uh, uh, older children, they make uh, their strong groups. They have to, sometimes they tend to bully the, or hurt uh, the younger children and sometimes get money from them. So these are not accepted things. 
if these things happen, child, teacher uh, has, has a, a very uh, sensitive role. Uh, he or she, she should take action to avoid such incidents. That is the expected uh, duty of a teacher. So another way of understanding the social interaction in the classroom is to use the sociometry technique. Now, this is helpful for the teacher to understand different kinds of interaction, different kinds of relationships happening in the classroom using the sociometry technique. What is it? A sociometry uh, or oh, technique, a sociogram, sociogram uh, helps you to uh, make it clear as to how interaction in a class take place. Now, in a classroom, there are stars, students uh, labeled as stars. Uh, then there are neglectees. Then there are isolates. Who are they? Stars. Uh, children who are uh, uh, well, or uh, who work well, who uh, interact well with others uh, are labeled as stars. Everybody appreciates them. And uh, everybody know about them. Then there are children uh, who are not appreciated by others. And they have very few people to talk with them, to approach with them. They are neglectives. See whether you have these in your classes, classrooms. Then there are, this is the worst thing. Uh, there, are, there may be some children who are not approached by anyone or by very few isolates. Teachers should know all these people, all these children, why her duty is to take all of them to a better place. If she does, if she can't understand, she can't see what is uh, the different kinds of uh, interactions in the classroom. She she's unable to find them. The stars. Normally, she can uh, recognize the stars, but neglect is and isolates. She also, some teachers also may do this. Neglect some children, make some children be isolated. See, if you are to be a teacher, please don't do it. Teachers can make use of this sociogram of the class to find out which students interact with others and uh, uh, who do not. So uh, ch some children may not, uh, they don't wish to interact with others uh, due to their emotional imbalance, emotional problem or adjustment problem that they carry from their backgrounds. So uh, these can be helped, uh, these uh, kind of situations can be avoided by the help of the teacher and the other children. So when teacher group the children, groups the children, she has to uh, group children in, a dif in different ways. Then Children get chances to talk with other children, move around with uh, many children, different children. So 
when they can talk, they can work together, uh, they share their ideas, then they can understand each other. They, sometimes uh, children become uh, neglected simply because they do not teach other. So uh, through, his, through the learning teaching process, the teacher should give chances for children to interact with each other well. The group activities, pair activities, outdoor activities, field visits, projects, uh, play activities, like so by uh, using different techniques for her teaching, she can give chances for children to mix with each other and understand each other. So uh, this will help uh, to the uh, understand the psychology of children and help them to get adjusted in the class and thereby in the society in future. The today's child is uh, the citizen in the society in future, tomorrow. So if you uh, uh, get your children well adjusted to a, a classroom situation means they will uh, do well in the society as well. So the classroom situation, classroom work is very much important to make the society. Right. Now, uh, we'll come to our uh, second uh, lesson. So, unit two, education, education in the social context. That is our second uh, unit, unit two. Uh, the structure here, uh, introduction, unit objectives, then uh, education as a uh, social subsystem, then uh, human rights education, uh, then education and the community with special reference to the Indian society, uh, summary and key terms and the questions. So, uh, first, uh, we'll see uh, what is uh, education. Uh, actually, education is a subsystem of society. And uh, it, it plays a key role uh, in molding, shaping, uh, reforming and constructing the society from time to time. Actually, education is the, uh, I mean, uh, former or the builder of the society. So, uh, one of the major features of contemporary education thinking uh, has been a growing concern about the development of effective personality and uh, efficiency of teaching learning outcome. Uh, that can be assessed in terms of students' achievement. Now, out of education, what is expected? Uh, to develop uh, uh, effective personality, effective uh, personality and uh, efficiency of teaching learning outcomes, efficiency and students' achievement 
what is expected through education a uh, good achievement in uh, students so academic achievement of students is considered a significant determinant of their success in their life now that is uh, see whether these things are true to your life if you uh, so you have achieved your academic achievements that's why you are here right that is a landmark in your life that is now you you have passed the examinations well that's why you are here and that uh, you have gained that through education so uh, achievement in academic subjects is important as it helps to students to understand the hierarchy uh, based on it higher the achievement the more the opportunities more opportunities if you get better results you get more chances at the advanced level or, or at the all levels you if you get good results better results you have far more uh, opportunities to get so uh, so Uh, like uh, science and technology you can see like science and technology or medicine or management literature education many other fields are there so in this unit uh, the various agencies of education and the role of education human rights education the role played by whom as an agency of education non formal agencies of education and the relationship between education and the society with special reference to indian society will be discussed the unit objectives the name of this unit in in the social context the objectives are discuss education as a social subsystem then explain the functions performed by schools sorry third one describe the role played by home as an agency of education uh, fourth one assess the role played by non formal agencies in the field of education next one discuss the meaning and significance of human rights and duties lastly evaluate the relationship between education and the society with special reference to the indian society so there are six objectives uh, education as a social subsystem now we uh, we said that it's a education is a sub subsystem in the society what is it duty its duty is to the uh, development of a whole man whole man the molding of whole man uh, so you have to consider the physical fitness the mental alertness moral excellence and social adjustment so these are very helpful to be a whole man what are the physically you have to be fit fit and mentally you have to be fit and alert your moral your attitude side should be excellent and you should be able to adjust move into the society well 
So to realize this objective of education, society has developed a number of specialized institutions. Society has developed a special organization to run the duty of the education. What are they? School, community, family, temple, church, library, newspapers, magazines, see, exhibitions, mass media, many kinds of things. The society has developed them. These things are called what? Agencies of education. Now, classification of age normally, uh, initially, agencies of education are classified as formal agencies of education, informal, formal, informal. Uh, under these two categories. Formal agencies, formal, by the word itself, they are organized systematically. They have very organized system. And uh, education process in formal institutions are deliberately planned. They, they are uh, well well planned and they have a prescribed curriculum there are teaching methods to follow and uh, and also teaching methods are definite and pre-planned and students uh, and teachers also follow a definite rule. So formal agencies are organized systematically. They are, the process is deliberately planned. They have a prescribed curriculum. Uh, teaching methods are definite and pre-planned. Both students and teachers have a definite rule to follow. In Formal education, informal, the other way, a formal one, not a pre-planned process. It occurs automatically in the process of living. See the difference. Now, formal education, you get now, for example, at school, you know, uh, that is uh, a deliberately planned place, have a curriculum, have a set of rules, teaching methods, a lot of planning are there. Informal education you get throughout your life. Now, for example, child, from his early age, learns the basic control of his body, how to use his body, how to use his hand, legs, uh, overall thing, how to control them. He learns. Then he learns his mother tongue and other languages used in his home or other close by places. And he learns the rules of social etiquette, social uh, rules. And they, then he uh, tries to adapt these rules, adapt them. So this informal education is a continuous process, lifelong process from uh, womb to tomb from your 
birth or before birth even, when you are in your mother's womb and to the tomb where you, uh, until you die, you get your informal education. So individual gathers new experiences uh, in connection with love and sex, personality of, uh, sorry, responsibility of marriage, parenthood, duties and responsibility as a citizen and this identity. See, you have different roles. Now, at the beginning, you, are, you were a child at home. So you learn uh, the learn from uh, the things, uh, what is happening in your family, with your relations, with your neighbors, and other things. Then you came to school, you became a student, then you had experiences. Now, other than your learning, from the school culture, you learn a lot of things uh, without knowing automatically how to behave, how to respect elders, uh, how to speak with friends, uh, how to... Uh... Right. Uh, then... Uh, now, you know, gradually, uh, uh, your circle widens. Uh, your circle widens. As a child, you have a very simple circle. At school, somewhat uh, bigger. Then you step into the society. Uh, maybe in your working place, after you got married. See, you have different... Uh, roles uh, to play. Your responsibilities uh, different. Uh, differ. Uh, you have uh, the, they become also wider. Uh, so uh, after you got married you have your uh, family's uh, life and parenthood and then you have to uh, duties and responsibilities as a, a citizen in the society and in your workplace, so many things. So, so, so all the time from quite early years to maturity and till his death, different institutions operate on individual and educate them. Now, we'll see how we can uh, classify the agencies of education. Now, formal, uh, uh, formal agencies, sorry, uh, school, school is a formal agency. What are the others? Uh, you can add to this. Uh, your libraries, uh, cinema, radio, television, picture galleries, games, press, uh, different institutions of uh, body agencies, uh, universities, uh, like that. Informal agencies, what are they? Your family, your community, your religion, uh, the marketplace, fairs, exhibitions, uh, social gatherings, social functions, uh, so many things act as informal agencies. Then, active and passive agencies of education. What are they? Uh, 
now the social agencies of education can further be divided how active agencies and passive agencies what are active agencies ah uh, active agencies are those which try to control the social processes and direct it to a definite goal active agencies they have a control over the activities control over you they have a definite goal they have a definite goal and they plan and control that work now for example school school have a definite schools have definite goals definite goal now that is uh, uh, determined by the uh, state or the education ministry the national wide they have Uh, goals and that goal uh, comes to school as a curriculum and syllabus so in this agency there is direct interaction between educator and educand educator the teacher educand the student direct interaction directly they have involvement for their uh, achieving the goal so they influence each other in the process of learning educator influence the uh, child or educand in the process of learning and teaching on the other hand the educand also influence the educator see when teacher now teacher plans uh, her lesson and she uh, uh does the lesson after the lesson is done she can reflect on her teaching what happened does uh, did the lesson happened as i expected as i planned why did the children uh, not listen to me why did they behave badly so teacher can reflect and she can pre pre plan the next lesson so that's how the educants uh, influence the Uh, educator so they have uh, both way influence active agencies uh, not only schools but the community community your community has this two way influence uh, and uh, the family state social clubs religious places they are known as active edu agencies of education they have a direct interaction between the two parties what are passive agencies of education passive only one way transmission one way transmission no feedback no feedback one way these agencies influence the educand but not influenced by him educand the learner they influence they give information lot of things but does not get feedback what are these passive agencies of education mass media radio television cinema newspaper magazines one way transmission in brief we can say that while in active uh, active agencies 
uh, interaction between child and the agency is possible in a passive agency there is no such interaction Then we come to a uh, special topic: schools as agency agents of education. School uh, uh, as an agency of education developed at the stage the stage of uh, social development. When division of labor became pronounced and the need to create some special institution to educate people. Schools, school as an agency of education uh, started why to educate the people, to educate the people as an as a special institution to educate the people. Now, uh, in ancient India, now you know, we had uh, uh, in the uh, schools like Guru Ashram, Guru Kula, Vihar, Sangha, Patashala, and Vidya Right, we know uh, different uh, schools at the ancient times. So they played a prominent role, very significant role in the process of socialization and transmission of rich, rich cultural heritage of the country. Basically, in those ancient times, those schools uh, uh, act as a, a, a form of socialization and it transmitted the cultural heritage in the country to people. In the medieval period, uh, we had maktabs and madrasas or schools. So from them, the modern school system, uh, which, which is uh, developed to this level, uh, came from India by the British invasion of India. In modern industrial society, the school system has emerged as one of the most uh, potent agencies of socialization. It's a very good place, very good agency for socialization. Schools offer two contexts for students. What are they? Formal context of the classroom that is given as the curriculum, prescribed curriculum. They learn the formal context decided by the curriculum. And the second one is informal, informal one. That can be perceived by the interpersonal relationship of students with teachers and those of other students, those among the students. Teacher, student relationships, student, student relationships, they can achieve informal education and from the formal con uh, context decided by the curriculum, they achieve the uh, formal, 
formal context is achieved by that. So these two contexts happen in schools. Uh, Talcott Parsons. Talcott Parsons has written a book, uh, an essay uh, named Social Class as a Social System in 1959. Social Class as a Social System. In that, he say, uh, school, school uh, as a social system uh, follows or performs four important functions simultaneously. School uh, performs four functions. What are they? Emancipation of the child from the family. Emancipi emancipation of the child from the family. Second one is internalization of social values and norms at a higher level than, than as available in the family. Internalization of social values and norms. Normally, children get something from their home background. But that is not a structured institution. So it has a greater responsibility to internalize the social values and norms in children. The third one is differentiation. The Differentiation of school of the school class in terms of actual achievement. Uh, differentiation the school the actual in terms of actual achievement. Now in schools, children uh, achieve uh, certain. Uh, results through their uh, education so that based on that they get differentiated next one the selection and allocation of human resources into the adult role system so this is very very important why I have mentioned this earlier also. Today's child is tomorrow's leader. So you have you build leaders in the school, in your classrooms. Now, this is very, very important. Why? I should say it again and again. If we say society is corrupted, Your finger will be directed to the school, to the classroom. If the uh, if the society has uh, more uh, uh, wrongdoers, wrong people, uh, lawbreakers like that, we should we point our thumb to. To the school so nobody can deny the great responsibility of the school so the next point uh, right so the selection uh, right by going through this process the child acquires the values of industrial society like the achievement, orientation, discipline, liberalism, and rationality. So, child acquires learning 
So school as a, uh, as an agency of socialization, see, a lot of responsibilities. This is according to Calcott Parsons. Then, origin of the term school. School, school. The term school, how was it originated? Uh, no, and it, uh, actually, uh, there, uh, we can't find a definite uh, way where it came from. Now, uh, uh, probably, uh, it, it has originated from the Greek word skole, skole. Scholar means leisure, right? Uh, now, if we go back to the history, we will find uh, that in the ancient civilizations, in our ancient civilizations, India, Greece, China, and Egypt, uh, they had material prosperity in creed now they had greater civilization they they are materially equipped prosperity prosperous periods were there uh, it was the it was a result of leisure which became available to at least to the people belonging to the upper classes in the society. Leisure became available. Leisure, free time. Now, you know, uh, the philosophers, philosophers, how did they come out? When you have enough freedom, enough leisure time, and no problem. If you have wealth and you have desire to learn more and more, you become a philosopher. That's how these ancient philosophers in Greece, uh, in India, and uh, in other countries also uh, evolved. So, so through this word scholae, uh, maybe the uh, term uh, school has been originated. Uh, to spend their leisure hours profitably. Now, the people in those elite people uh, in those ancient uh, countries, uh, they developed a special institution to educate themselves. Ah, the elite people, upper class people, they formed a special institution to educate themselves in their leisure time. This institution came to be known as a school. Thus, the school system developed out of surplus economy. Uh, due to uh, uh, development of material resources, the school became more important agency of formal education in modern times. So uh, now the school became a very important agency of formal education. So it has become the uh, predominant mode of transmitting culture everywhere in the world. So through the, it's a mode of transmitting the culture throughout the world. Now, uh, and also to preserve and strengthen the cultural heritage of a society, 
to control ideals, values, beliefs, customs, and traditions. So uh, this time, the uh, duty of a school through formal education, uh, the, it has widened its aspects. Now, uh, we'll uh, talk about functions of school. Functions. What are the functions of the school? Uh, it's a, uh, now, we have categorized the uh, agencies of education now. No, uh, basically, uh, formal and informal. Then, as Uh, then active and uh, passive. Now, what are the uh, functions? Conservation and perpetuation of school life. Conservation and perpetuation of school life. That is one. Then the second one is promotion of culture and civilization. Promotion of culture and civilization. Third one, deployment of cultural pluralism. Deployment of cultural uh, pluralism. Next one, all-round development of the individual. All-round development of the individual. Next one is responsibility of social construction responsibility of social construction next one development of the quality of leadership development of the sorry quality of leadership and promotion of social efficiency we'll uh, talk about this in detail uh, the first one is conservation and perpetuation of school life. Uh, now, what is expected by the school? Actually, to conserve the social culture prevailing in the society. conserve or protect the social culture. Now, the social culture uh, is, is a thing achieved with great cost of time and suffering. This, now, for example, the, now, in a country, in a country, the, uh, the the, the, the society or the social background is earned with hardships. It has taken time. It has it was it had ups and downs, wars, war periods. Now, the in these days, very unfortunate unfortunate period. Why many countries now they have become. Uh, very good countries with everything around them, but they are fighting with each other. They, they these countries are destructed, destroyed, getting destroyed. See how many hardships were there in the previous time to build up their social, societal culture, but within seconds, within blasting of a bomb, all things get scattered. How many more years and money and strength and people 
will be needed to come to the position it had previously. These are very, very important things. So school has to take the foremost post of conserving the uh, social, ex existing social culture. The continuity of social life can be maintained by the school by transmitting the customs, traditions, values, and experiences of the society for, from generation to generation. You can transmit. That's why a teacher should be a scholar. She or he should uh, update his knowledge and skills every day regularly, then only he, he she, she can transmit the customs of the society, the tradition it had, the social values and the social generation to your next generation, the students. So the school can teach the minimum general culture and civilization. Next point is promotion of culture and civilization. Conservation and transmission of culture from one generation to another is the only function of the school. Ah, you have to keep that in mind. It's not the sole function of the school to conserve and transmit the social culture. It has other aspects. The school imparts adequate training for the enrichment and edification of culture. Uh, it adds something to the environment. Uh, it enriches the society. School enriches the society and it makes the society a better and happier place. So the school transmits cultural heritage and recognizes and deconstructs human experiences for the promotion and of culture and civilization that I think you can understand. It promotes the culture, enriches the culture. Next one is deployment of cultural pluralism. Pluralism. Pluralism means uh, in the society we have different religions, different castes, creeds, hierarchy, everything mixed up in the society. And in the classrooms, you have children belonging to all these different uh, categories. So in a classroom, uh, uh, students come from different societal uh, backgrounds mix freely in a friendly in atmosphere, friendly environment. So they develop sympathy towards each other. They uh, uh, develop cooperation. They help each other. Uh, they tolerate tolerance and they res uh, learn respect for the views of others in a natural way. So school acts as an important agency to develop cultural pluralism, to develop the cultural pluralism among the students. Next point is, next function of the school is all-round development of the individual. 
all round developing all rounders molding all rounders all round personality students with all round personality is the utmost result as utmost uh, expected by the school so this uh, all mean physical physical uh, intellectual social moral spiritual and aesthetic development with all kinds of blended all kind of development physically mentally socially moral wise attitudinal spiritual and aesthetic wise the school develops these qualities of the child with the help of the curricula and co-curricular activities not only the curricula but the co-curricular activities help to mold the child mold the personality the co-curricular activities there are a lot of uh, co-curricular activities uh, which are functioning in schools these days various games sports uh, social services activities craft works uh, different kinds of societies aesthetic activities uh, scouts girl guides uh, uh, like lot of number of uh, uh, co-curricular activities these days you can find in schools actually they, they are very helpful for this task so next point is responsibility of social reconstruction reconstruction social reconstruction instruction in the school develops spiritual feeling in the individuals spirit spiritual side of the child develops through the activities uh, in the school so uh, the atmosphere of an average home may not suit may not be suitable for the developing of spiritually spiritual feeling in the individual but schools cannot afford to ignore the spiritual development of the students by creating a suitable atmosphere it can develop spiritual feelings is the responsibility spiritually if we are uh, uh, well developed we uh, never tend to harm another we tend to uh, we don't uh, try to kill another person or uh, do harmful activities to the society we try to live uh, peacefully with others in the society if we are uh, spiritually developed so that is another thing expected by the school the next one is development of the quality of leadership now schools develop leaders for tomorrow so they train the students to understand their role in society and state and to make proper use of their rights and duties so uh, tools various activities happen in the school Uh, children recognize their 
skills uh, and competencies and teachers help to develop these uh, skills and competencies of students then that way they develop certain leadership abilities through the activities now for example uh, in a sports meet uh, you have different houses house leaders house captains uh, sports leaders uh, class uh, members for the house so they engage in different games so that's a vast kind of experience so they are engaging that they develop the leadership abilities and that ability they develop in school is helpful when they uh, uh, I mean, do a profession in the uh, when they go to the society so leaders are the leadership qualities are uh, molded in the school in course of their learning the student get an opportunity to think critically in order to become conscious citizens of the democratic state by accepting leadership in different co-curricular activities, they get training leadership, which helps them to become future leaders of the country. Right. The last point of that promotion of social efficiency. Promotion of social efficiency. What is it? The most important function of the modern school is to provide social efficiency. Students should get the training for the democratic living with emphasizes on social efficiency. To make social uh, more productive, more efficient is the uh, is what is ex expected by the school. So by these functions, I think you understand why the school has become a significant and basic institution in the society. Therefore, the state should come forward to support the school in a big Way. Now, I think uh, we have to understand that the importance of having schools in the society, uh, there's a saying, uh, closing of one school means opening of hundred uh, what do you call uh, prisons closing of one prison means opening of thousand uh, hundred uh, prisons why why are there prisons to lock the uh, uh, wrong doers right if you close a uh, school maybe you miss the chance of molding good citizens. So school is a very prominent uh, institution in the society. Everybody has to recognize it and the importance of it in this uh, society and how it helps to the development of the society. Now let's uh, 
come to uh, functions of the modern school. Uh, function of the modern schools. Now, in the ancient times, schools were there um, simply to teach reading, writing, uh, arithmetic, and a few other academic subjects. It was confined to that. But with the dawn of modern age, all these have been changed. Schools are no more places to develop only these primary skills. They have a lot more function. So the importance of universal education, universal education, Everybody has accepted that. So in schools, uh, we are producing a person, skillful person, uh, who can uh, perform everywhere, not, not only in the locality, not only in his, uh, his motherland, but outside everywhere in the world he will be a, a cap capable of uh, doing uh, something to work. Uh, the needs and the nature of modern production also make it obligatory for the state to make education free and compulsory for all. Now, so this also is vital because education should be free and compulsory for all the uh, individuals in the society. Otherwise, we will not be able to achieve the functions expected by them. Uh, we will see what are the functions of the modern school. Uh, get way to lucrative jobs. Get way to lucrative jobs. Number two, introduction to productive work. Introduction to introduction of productive work. Uh, let's look at this. Okay, way to look for few jobs. Uh, modern schools are the places where formal training is provided in certain technical skills like reading, writing, and drawing. Now, uh, in uh, subjects like history, geography, and uh, other sciences, uh, also they are also taught to provide students with uh, lucrative jobs and uh, professions of prestige. Uh, so uh, schools have become the instruments for Killing the spirit of joy, initiative, and love of work in children in order to provide them with the white collar job in their unforeseen future. That schools now function as agency of formal education in order to provide lucrative jobs and professions of prestige to the students. So through this formal education, most of the students are uh, likely to, or they, they are in need of uh, entering the uh, prestige professions 
in the society. So that is a gateway or uh, a door uh, for them to go towards these uh, prestigious jobs. Then the next one is introduction of uh, productive work. Now, uh, in the modern technological society, we have machines and productive work. So it, uh, they have become the integral part of schooling. Now, not only the academical side, the, the certain subjects are there for uh, to develop uh, certain prestigious job, job sites, there are also the technological site like machinery work, productive works are also there in the school, the technical subjects. So uh, students are allowed to find out the types of productive activities suited to their age groups and to various levels of academic growth. So now, you know, uh, now they can select certain subjects when they come to grade 10 sometimes, they can find some optional subjects uh, to uh, according to their preference. So they learn uh, different uh, skills by learning those subjects. Uh, uh, an authority like Paul Nash, Paul Nash, Paul Nash feel that uh, in our technological society, work has lost his real meaning. Now, he says in this technological world, we have lost the, the work has lost the real meaning, work, work. Why does he see so? It fails to provide satisfaction and happiness. By doing our work, we have lost our satisfaction and happiness. See? It does not work as a means of self-realization. Uh, so we do not work for the self-realization. In order to restore its real meaning, work should again be made a reflective activity. It will reflect the mechanical. We have become mechanical persons. We have, we, uh, you know, uh, we work, but we do not get uh, real satisfaction through our work. We uh, do this, do for the sake of doing sometimes. So we have to go back. How? That is, work should be, should make one conscious of relationship between workers and work, between worker and management, between a man's work and society's needs, between the intentions and execution, between the present activity, past benefit, and future promise. See, this is very, very important. Uh, when we work, we have to be very conscious. We have, we have to have a definite uh, aim of doing work. We have to consider certain aspects while we are doing work. What are they? We have to be very conscious 
of the relationship between workers and worked when we doing work. And the worker and the management, the relationship between the worker and management, we have to think about it. And man's work and society's needs. We have to we have to see whether we are doing some work, whether and whether it's fulfilling a need in the society. Are we doing our work efficiently and effectively? And uh, the intention and execution, what is the intention? Uh, the objective of doing it and how it is done. Actually, uh, whether it is done according to uh, the objectives, targeted to the objectives, we have to see this. And our the present activity, the past benefits and the future promise of our work. So various things we have to consider when doing our work. Hence, the function of modern school should be to make work a reflective activity through the development of purpose and commitment in student and at the same time help uh, help to lose uh, play uh, playfully in the work task of the moment so uh, so we have to uh, help our students uh, to uh, become uh, to work to make their work a reflective activity to develop the uh, society so the modern uh, function of the schools uh, should be developed i think uh, uh, i have a uh, uh, talked uh, non-stopping. I think it's time to, uh, before winding up, uh, to find out the topics we have discussed. Uh, initially, uh, we have discussed the uh, peer group and uh, student uh, subculture. Uh, peer group and student subculture. And uh, under that, uh, functions of the peer groups, then uh, factors affecting the peer groups, age, sex, and so social class. Then uh, I started unit two. Education in the social context. Then I said uh, the topics uh, that will be discussed in the uh, in unit two are education as a social subsystem, uh, human rights education, and 
education and the community with special reference to Indian society. Uh, under uh, education as a social subsystem, Right. Now, before that, uh, uh, we, we discuss the unit objectives, uh, education, uh, discuss education as a social subsystem, explain the functions performed by schools, describe the role played by them as an agency of education, assess the role played by non-formal agencies in the field of education, discuss the meaning and significance of human rights and duties, evaluate the relationship between education and the society with special reference to Indian society. In a the first uh, topic, education as a social subsystem. Uh, we discussed classification of agencies of education as formal and informal, and then active and passive agencies. Uh, then uh, we discussed uh, schools as agents of education. Schools as agents of education. Then, uh, origin of the term school. Uh, then, uh, functions of schools. Functions of schools, uh, conservation and perpetuation of school life, promotion of culture and civilization, uh, deployment of cultural pluralism, all round development of the individual, responsibility of social reconstruction, development of of the quality of develop, uh, leadership, promotion of social efficiency. But, uh, then uh, we discussed uh, functions of the modern school, uh, gateway to lucrative jobs, introduction to productive, introduction to productive work. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, I like, uh, if, uh, one of you, uh, ask anything about, uh, today's lesson. Yes. Please raise your voice. Ravindika, Gimhani, or Gayani. I can't see the others. Do you have any? Yes, uh, Ravindika? No, madam. Uh, it's all clear. Right. Uh, did you, uh, Ravindika, um, did you attend the uh, previous lectures? Uh, no, ma'am. Today is the first day. I joined for the lectures. I have to follow the lectures uh, that have uploaded. Gayani, uh, what about you? Gayani, are you here? Uh, so, yeah. All are clear. <laughs> Hello. Uh -huh. All right. Did you attend the previous lectures? Uh, previous first lecture uh, continue some other video lesson learn. Okay. Right. 
thank you uh, for your feedback. Thank you, madam. Uh, so I uh, expect that uh, you go through the recordings and your textbook and uh, uh, develop uh, your uh, knowledge in this uh, subject and uh, uh, be ready. Now, uh, so I invite you to go through the recordings again and again and uh, have a clear understanding about the content. So I think it's time to wind up. Uh, so uh, I'll wind up now. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Good night. Good night, madam. Thank you. Good night, Good night. Thank you very much.